In our last episode, we explored the Rock Hound at the top of Mount Blair. The Rock Hound was a big excavation machine created by Hornwright Industrial, one of the three major mining companies of Appalachia. We learned that protesters attacked the Rock Hound, captured it, and occupied it for several days before being repelled by the National Guard. They attacked it after the nearby town of Welch was destroyed. But caught up in the moment, they attacked the wrong company. Hornwright Industrial did not destroy Welch. Atomic Mining Services destroyed Welch. We learned from the terminal entries at Hornwright Industrial that Penny and her employees tried to make it to Welch to secure those resources before AMS did, but failed. AMS beat them to the punch. But what resources did they discover beneath Welch? And why did AMS feel like a town needed to be destroyed to get at them? To find out, we need to explore the ruins of Atomic Mining Services. We find their headquarters in the heart of downtown Watoga, the AMS Corporate Headquarters. Welcome to AMS, the future of mining. AMS is here for you. Thank you for visiting. Heading through the front door to the lobby, we see 25 years of piled up refuse. Cinder blocks, barrels, ruined robots, and human skeletons draped over chairs and piled in corners. Automated mining services welcome you to the home of industry. Visitors, please see our receptionist. That's all we find in the lobby. It's been picked clean of resources. But in the middle of the lobby, we find an elevator that takes us upstairs to the AMS headquarters. We arrive in the AMS upstairs lobby, where we have to kill a Protectron. We see Protectron wreckage piled up almost as if it's a sculpture, impaled on a spike and in pieces. Looks like someone's been here before. On the eastern side of this upstairs lobby, we find a reception desk. Beneath the receptionist terminal, we find a floor safe. Let's see if we can activate it by hacking the skill level one locked receptionist terminal. Inside, we find six options. In the first, atomic mining services. Here's the new spiel for anyone coming through looking for a tour. As always, do not mention Ultrasight or the town of Welch. Oh, so they adopted the pretend it never happened strategy. I'm sure that worked. Atomic Mining Services is the industry leader in alternative drilling operations throughout Appalachia. By utilizing the power of controlled nuclear detonations, AMS is able to mine the rich resources of this area deeper underground than ever before. Our continued partnership with Robco and Hornwright Industrial have resulted in such exciting projects as Watoga, the city of the future, and the Hornwright Auto Miner, the future of automated mining. That's right, AMS and Hornwright were partners. AMS helped Hornwright develop the auto miner. Perhaps that's why the rioters attacked the Rockhound, giving Hornwright partial blame for what happened at Welch because they were partnered with AMS. And AMS drilled for resources using subterranean nuclear detonations? Is that what happened to Welch? Good God. In the next one, pneumatic elevator system, please reassure all guests that the pneumatic elevator system is completely safe. Yes, they may experience some slight discomfort and vertigo as the elevator runs through a particularly stubborn part of the tube, but insist that it all serves the purposes of getting them to their meeting that much faster. What? What was wrong with the elevator? That's served humanity well for hundreds of years. In the next one, Michael. Michael from Finance had another incident. I mean, hasn't he learned his lesson? It's like he's doing it on purpose. Oh, do you think that's a possibility? We should let him go before this becomes a true liability. I'll have HR draw up termination papers. Better safe than sorry. What did Michael do? In the next one, safe control, we can disengage the lock. In the one after this, protectron control, we can activate a nearby protectron unit. And finally, we can play or eject the holotape loaded into this terminal. We see that the name of the holotape is Message from Hank Madigan. Uh oh. <coughs> hey. <coughs> you were supposed to be on my side. We can listen to the holotape in our inventory. This is Hank Madigan. Message any fire breathers running through here after me. Had to dodge more robots, turrets, and I can count, but I found what we're looking for. Atomic mining services were barons of ultrasight. Had a lab right here in this office. I think they might have found a way to help us out, even if they didn't know it. it. Turns out, once all the fuel is spent, there's a hunk of material left behind. This depleted ultrasight doesn't play nice with normal stuff. It turns corrosive. AMS was thinking disposal and containment. I'm thinking weapon. Scorched walk around with chunks of ultrasight stuck in him. We 
modify some guns to fire a depleted ultrasight. See if that makes those assholes melt. So that's what those green crystals are sticking out of Scorched. Chunks of ultrasight. And that's why ultrasight weapons and ammunition do more damage against Scorched. We'll learn more about how the responders harness this technology when we cover the primary quest later. I forgot to loot the safe here, but it just contained randomized gear. We can move out to explore the rest of this level. We see a number of skeletons and two pods. The first is the third floor access hatch. The second is the top floor access hatch, but this one requires a terminal. The others on this floor are boarded up rusted shut, damaged, or filled in with rubble. So looks like we only have one path forward. This must be the pneumatic tube we read about on the terminal. So heading to the only one that works for now, we can take the pneumatic tube to the third floor. Upon arrival, we can take out a turret. And on a counter to the left, we find another holotape. Stuck. Stuck. Again. Garmin thinks I should document when this happened so we can sue the company. I don't know about all that. It's not really their fault, but there's not all that much to do while I'm in here, so here goes. Wasn't easy reaching the recorder, but I think I got it turned on. At least this time I'm in a section you can see from the hallway, so I shouldn't have to wait long. But what luck? There's... That's why they wanted to fire Michael. He kept getting stuck in the pneumatic tube. And why was that? Maybe he was too large for the tube. Sounds like he didn't want to sue AMS, but AMS was gonna fire him afraid he would anyway. Funny that Michael got stuck, but here I am in a full suit of power armor and I got through just fine. After listening to the holotape, we can get rid of more turrets and security robots that emerge from around the corner. <laughs> With the turrets and robots destroyed, we can explore. We see these pneumatic tubes snaking throughout the building. We can start by heading up an eastern staircase where we have to get rid of more turrets. <laughs> this staircase leads to a ledge where we find a skill level one locked security terminal. After hacking it, we find a number of entries. Caution, authorized personnel only. Security turrets are equipped with live fire automated weaponry. Unauthorized usage and access will be detected and prosecuted. In the first October 25th, 2076, new deadlines. AMS Entremail, from E. Utley to all. Just a reminder that I'd like to catch up with all of you about the new deadlines. Stop by my office whenever the door is open. Thanks. In the next one, oh, and we see that it's a response. Let's go all the way to the beginning of this email chain, heading down to October 24th, Hey Stranger, from R. Mustafa to T. Osman. It was great to run into you at the music festival. How long has it been since college? Nearly 10 years? I think Bobby was just born last time we had a chance to spend some time together. I know my family was looking forward to meeting up soon. I'm sure Bobby and Willie will grow as close as commies if we get them together over some board games. If we can get Willie to put the Grognak comics down for a whole game anyway. She is obsessed lately. Anyway, let me know when your schedule's free and we can get something going. Mustafa got a response later that day from T. Osman to Mustafa. Riley, I had no idea you were still in the Commonwealth, let alone in Watoga. I guess this city does have more of us techies than any other place in the area. Still, it's great to run into you and your family again. My wife would love to hang out with Jamie. I think they have a lot in common. She's had some difficulty getting used to working outside of her field in Watoga, too. They just don't need human dentists here, you know? It's been an adjustment, but the amenities are just too good to pass up. I'm sure that Jamie has some good tips on how to cope with that mode shift. After taking to the interior decorating thing like a fish to water, who would have thought that it had so much in common with radiology? Also, Bobby loves grognak and board games, so that should be no problem. T. 
The next day, Riley responds, For sure. I know that neither of us is really able to talk shop about anything specific, but I think it would be nice to be around someone else who's working for one of the big robotic corps. We are all basically living with the same pressures, though I don't know how you tolerate the commuter life. That monorail is just a bit too tall for me. I guess all the free Robco fun games must help with that. Speaking of, is it too soon to press you for details on when the next one comes out? And that same day, T responds, Oh, you know I can't talk about stuff like that. If we get discounted copies internally, I'll be sure to let you know, though. Also, it's a good thing the monorail's up so high. If you think the bog smells bad in town, well... I had to take one of the commuter buses recently, and the smell gave me a horrible headache all afternoon. We drove through that little old town near Watoga, and I could not imagine how run down it was. There's no shops or restaurants. I'm not even sure they have electricity. The amount of foreclosed and condemned signs on the buildings was nuts. I feel bad for anyone who has to live there. Could you imagine? Oh, speaking of other roboticists from our college in the area, Ala and Sinan are both also in the area on mining contracts. We should have a little get-together on Veterans Day or something. What do you think? T. He's likely talking about the abandoned bog town, which apparently was a slum even before the bombs dropped. In the next one, Missed Morning Meeting, from E. Utley to R. Mustafa, Riley, you forgot to come to the morning status meeting again. Too busy reading all those Grognak comics, huh? We need to talk about moving the dates on some of your tasks a bit to meet with the new deadlines proposed in yesterday's meeting. Let's catch up in my office later. So it wasn't his child who was interested in Grognak, it was Riley. And in the next one, connect to GWBBS, we access the Greater Watoga Bulletin Board System. These terminal entries are shared by many of the places here in Watoga. And since many of the people who worked here at AMS lived in Watoga, we find them here as well. In the first, Community Announcements, we find a number of errors, notice of seasonal pool closures, either this item is no longer accessible or cannot be loaded at this time. Please contact the Greater Watoga BBS System Administrator for assistance. There are many like this, including Watoga High School Student Study Nights, but a few that work, Halloween at Watoga Estates, stickers available now. Notice to all residents, hello to everyone that's expressed interest in participating in Halloween festivities at Watoga Estates. Please stop by the front desk for your building or submit a request for participation sticker for your door. Miss Nanny Bots will be looking for these stickers when they bring children around for candy. So if you don't have a sticker, then you won't get to see any cute costumes. Use stickers only as directed. We don't want a repeat of last year's stairwell pile up. Thank you for your cooperation. Ah, the joys of automated everything. Music festival schedule for fall, error. But we can read Veterans Day raffle at Watoga Estates, unlimited indoor pool access. Notice to all residents, Watoga Estates would like to help support our active military and military veterans with a unique opportunity. We will be raffling off one month of unlimited access to our indoor pool facilities to residents who turn off lights in their home during the first week of November. Tell your Mr. Handy to opt in today to start earning tickets for our Veterans Day raffle. Having one light off for 24 hours will earn one ticket. Oh, so the city of the future was having power issues. So much for progress. And the final one, Thanksgiving Farmer's Market and Food Bot Schedule, error. So we can move on to general discussion. Again, lots of errors. To the next mayor, since this mayor is an idiot. But we can read Miss Nanny's new haircut features, Parents Beware. As a single father, I don't really know what the best looks are for my young daughter. I was initially so glad to hear about this feature. I thought it would make it easy for her to primp and style her hair properly. However... She selected a hairstyle from the default list, and now she only has a single stripe of hair left on her head. I'm not sure what to do, because the salon can't see her until next week. She can't go to high school like this. It is utterly unbelievable that such a hairstyle would be considered default for young ladies. I can't believe she's not bawling her eyes out over such a disaster. But so far, she's not complained even once. What a proper and well-mannered young lady. You would almost believe that she wasn't upset at all by the horrible haircut that Miss Nanny gave to her. <laughs> I think this father's going to be surprised by his daughter when she grows up. The next one has an error. Free desk sitting outside of Blanc Q. Move it yourself before someone else gets it. And then we can read, I was mayor for exactly one day. I was really excited originally when I came to this town. What an exciting concept. Anyone can be the mayor for just one day? But then I became the mayor and it lasted only nine hours. Can someone explain to me why the random rotation goes by so quickly? And how do I become the mayor again? Or am I not able to be the mayor ever again since I already did it? Thank you in advance, Terry. 
This is in reference to the quest Mayor for a Day, but that's an episode for another day. In the next one, Q&A, Automated Garbage Disposal Problem, answered, Question. Does anyone know why the automated garbage disposal system on Block C doesn't seem to accept the plastic scrap that my Mr. Handy tries to deposit in it? Confirmed answer. Daryl, if the building's disposal system has too much of one kind of scrap, it'll stop accepting more until management empties it. Answer. Nas, did you ensure that the Handy knows where the scrap deposit chutes are located? It's a common user error during startup. Also, another thing you could try, if you know how, is to query whether the Handy is detecting an item as plastic. It's good to rule out human error. Oh, they accurately reproduced the passive-aggressive tendencies of public Q&A sites. Nice touch, Bethesda. And in the final one, an error. To the well-coiffed gentleman with the gold handy in block H. Inquiry about your stylist. I'm really bummed we can't read that one. Next, we can explore pop culture talk. Hubris Comics now offers free automated pickup in Watoga. Your comics are in good hands. Get all your favorite titles delivered directly to your door by your own Mr. Handy and skip waiting in line. Hubris Comics is not responsible for the condition of your comics on their arrival. Your Handy might try to keep them for himself, after all. In order to begin receiving your comics at home, stop by the store with your Handy anytime. Our friendly automated and living staff are always happy to assist you. Interesting that in the automated city of tomorrow, having living, breathing, and human staff was a positive marketing point. Almost as if there's a downside to a city run entirely by robots. Many of these are also errors. Do you think Grognak and Manta Man have to hang out a lot because the other Unstoppables are all busy solving crimes? And Atomic Command, fan-made Watoga level. But then we can read Hubris Comics Manta Man back issue sale. Buy one, get one free. Exclusive offer for Watoga residents only. Backstroke through some Manta Man back issues with our end of summer sale. And one final error, Scout's Life back issue looking for a good home. Send me your best offers. And the final one, Job Postings, has an error. What a fascinating glimpse into the everyday life of those privileged enough to live here in Watoga. Some of the very same people who worked and likely died in this very building. After looting a first aid box behind us, we can go down the steps to the floor. We see a number of rooms on this level. And a Yaogwai corpse? What? What's a Yaogwai corpse doing on the floor? There's a room nearby and a skeleton hanging out of the window. And peering in, we see blood and all sorts of dried fluids on the ground. What was Amos doing here? We can head northwest to open a door to enter this room. We see grass, hay, bedding material all over the ground, and two skeletons in lab coats. I think what happened becomes clear. They were holding a bear here, perhaps experimenting on it by subjecting it to vapors that came from this red tube. But how did it mutate into a Yaogwai? We see a room back there. Heading out, we can head through the northern door. Ah! Doggone turrets. Looks like there's another level up there. We'll have to find a way up in a minute. Heading through, we find a hallway. We can go west or east. Heading west first, we can open a door to the right. This leads to an office guarded by another turret. Heading inside, we see some sort of equipment checkout. There's a skeleton in a long suit jacket beneath a terminal. And behind the desk, we find a first aid kit and another man in a suit. The doors to the equipment checkout are open. Here we find a hazmat suit, some ammunition, a first aid kit, and a combat rifle. Back out to the hallway, we can again move west. Here we find a door that leads to the room where we saw that red pipe. Sticking out of the pipe is a piece of ultrasite scrap. What, were they vaporizing ultrasite and experimenting on animals with the vapor? The terminal is blasted out and this room is a dead end. So after looting a first aid kit, we can head back to the hallway and this time head east. Soon we find a door to the left and on either side of the door are radiation signs. Peering in, we see a number of empty Protectron charging docks and a room to the west with more caution radiation signs. But the window is broken, and peering in, we find another piece of ultrasite scrap. But there's a note here. We have to head inside. After looting a first aid kit by the blasted out terminal, we can open the door, whereupon we find another cage with another dead animal. After looting the first aid kit on the wall here, we can read the note. Subject 43. Subject 43, naked mole rat. Exposure to heated ultrasite, standard parameters. Observation, severe mutation consistent with advanced doses of radiation. 
Conclusion Ultrasite contains high-dense radioactive energy. Even burning a small amount releases enough to serve a variety of industrial applications. Recommend green light to all proposed projects. So they were testing the radiation output of igniting ultrasite as a fuel on animals. Looks like Hank Madigan was right. Heading out, we can continue east. Here we find a skill level 2 locked door to the right, and inside we find a supply closet. We see a big stack of ashtrays. Looks like the employees were smokers. Some plasma cartridges, a first aid kit, and two ammo boxes. Heading out and continuing east, we see a staircase leading up and another hallway moving south. Heading south, we see a room to the left. We can loot another first aid kit, and here we find a bunch of tubes and... What are these, incinerators? There's a blasted out workstation here, and that's about it. Moving out and continuing south, we see that the hallway ends, but opens up into one final room to the east. After looting yet another first aid kit on the wall, this one locked with a skill level zero lock, we can loot a frag mine and a combat knife from a shelf, and turning around, we find a console with the hydraulic press control terminal. The hydraulic press is absolutely capable of crushing anything you put in there. And while it may not seem like it's under tension when a single sample is in the system, it can suddenly clamp down when the material's point of fatigue or fracture is reached. Before we begin a new test, we can read the last test results. Sample designation, Ultrasite Fulgurite, 0E8K00A86. Hydraulic fatigue test comments. This all seems pretty normal. Ugh, the system is stuck, hitting the emergency disengage. Can we get this automated next? I'll be right back to edit this comment. Geochemical analysis comments. The clean lab is currently undergoing a deep clean after one of the animal holding specimens was let loose to leave samples in our lab. Test results are pending, but this looks like a pretty standard type 5 exogenic sample, and we don't expect anything super crazy from it. Sample collection comments. Pretty normal coloration, vesicle size, and soil grading observed in the sample. It is shaped a bit like an appendage that is humorous. Wait, I thought they were crushing ultracite, a rock, not organic material. Did they mean humerus? H-U-M-E-R-U-S, as in the bone? That's part of an appendage. An appendage that is humerus. Oh, oh, a humerus append- I get it. Shaped like a funny organ. Right. Gamma spectroscopy analysis comments. Levels of radioactivity seen within normal variants for this kind of sample. No anomalous inclusions found during the above comments by my esteemed colleague, so CS137 levels are as expected. We can again connect to the GWBBS, but this has everything we've already read, and so we can try to begin a new test. Error, error, error. Tension sensor failure, emergency disengage failure, critical system failure in progress. Please contact an engineer immediately. Oh, I hope we haven't blown something up. Nearby we see a window. Looks like there's the hydraulic press. We do see something glowing in there. Peering down, yeah, there is something sandwiched inside the press. But we can't access it. And that's everything for this floor. Now we need to head out, go north down the hallway, and take the staircase up to the second floor. At the top of the stairs we see a doorway to the west and a hallway to the south. Moving south first, we can open a door to the left. This leads to a small office. The terminals are all blasted out, and we don't find much. Back out, we can continue south and open the next door. Restricted area, keep out. Here we find a number of blasted out fusion generators, but one still works, and we can take the fusion core. After looting some scrap in cabinets to the south, we can head back to the hallway. We find one final door down this hallway, leading to a room to the right. At first I thought this door would have led to the same room as the door we passed when we arrived on this level. So I went back there, only to find out that this one led to a completely different room. However, we do find a window overlooking the other room against the southern wall. In this room we find containers to loot and one more piece of ultrasite scrap. And that leaves one room left to explore. Back to the hallway, we can move south and up some stairs to the upper level of the forecourt, the room with the dead Yaguai. Immediately to the left, we find a break room, some Nuka-Cola machines, and a porta diner with a human skeleton lying on top. Wow, she really must have loved pie, if eating some was her final thought in life. We can try our luck. No dice. We see a number of cigarette machines here, wow. Yeah, these guys really did love their cigarettes. Heading out, we see that this upper level goes in a big loop. We'll follow it in a clockwise fashion, but just then we get spotted. Ugh, another ceiling-mounted turret. Are there any more? No, I think we're good. Opening the big double doors to the south leads to a large office. But as we explore... Oh, there's no glass in those windows. And inside we find more turrets. 
With the turrets done, we explore this office, but we don't find much, just a bunch of scrap. The big double doors lead to the animal holding cells. The door is locked with a skill level 2 lock, or we can hack the skill level 1 wall-mounted terminal. Live specimens may exhibit extreme aggression. Security system will fire at any target. Do not assume immediate safety. Open confinement door at own risk. Here we find a couple of notes. We see the new deadlines one and the BBS one we read earlier, but one new one. October 29th, 2076. Specimens in my clean lab again? From N. Loper to K. Nakamura. What the heck? I just cleaned up in here after last time. Is this because you got stuck dealing with the organic samples again? I get it, but you're killing my productivity over here. From here, we can deactivate the turrets. Oh, too little, too late. And open the door. With the door open, we can head inside and we see skeletons on the ground. Were these killed by the turrets? Or killed by whatever animals used to be in these cells? Most of the cell doors are open. There's a note on the ground next to a skeleton reaching for our first aid kit. Subject 67. Subject 67. Cow. Exposure to heated ultrasight. Double standard dosing. Observation. Growth of a second head. No loss of function. Conclusion. Ultrasight exposure still consistent with advanced radiation mutations. Well, at least so far, we haven't found any evidence that they experimented on people. After looting the first aid kit, and then the one right next to it, we can move east. On this shelf, we find some security batons, ammunition, a pistol, and some more ultrasight scrap. There are dead mole rats and Brahmin in the cages. With the lab explored, we can head out and continue in a clockwise fashion. At the end, we find two doors in the northwest corner and a staircase leading to the east. Both of these doors lead to the restrooms, and they're connected through a broken wall. Going through the broken wall first, we explore the men's restroom. We see ashtrays in every single stall. <laughs> what is it with these guys in smoking? And one skeleton with his skull in the toilet. After looting the medicine cabinets, we can head back to the women's restroom. And just as we enter, <laughs> another turret. Why did they need turrets in the women's restroom? It's a bit overkill, don't you think? In the stalls, we find more ashtrays and cigarettes, but no bodies. When done, we can head out and finally take the short staircase to the east. Here we find a skill level one locked security terminal overlooking the forecourt. But after hacking it, all we find are the two entries we've seen in every terminal so far. So backing out, we can explore underneath the stairs. We find some shelves with a container and some ammunition. Then heading upstairs, we can loot a small storage room to the west. Here we find extra tables and chairs, a small amount of scrap, and one note hiding on the other side of a chair. Sue them. You put this recorder in your shirt pocket. It's small. No one will know it's there. I'm serious, Michael. It's not fair. They can't help it? You're just big-boned? We'll see what they have to say after we sue them for workplace safety violations. And don't be your usual idiot self and take this note to work. Throw it away at home. Also, the fridge forgot to order milk again. Pick some up on your way home. I'll be home late again. Don't wait up. Ooh. So Michael got stuck because he was big-boned. Looks like his wife was trying to get him to sue. This whole thing was just dollar signs for her, and we get the impression that she wasn't exactly faithful. When done, we can head out and open the big double doors to the south. This leads to another large office with one of the pneumatic tubes snaking through it. It's split into two sections. In the first section, we find a bunch of cubicles and a door to a generator room being guarded by a protectron. In the generator room, we can walk away with one fusion core and a bit of scrap. There's a skill level zero locked toolbox in the northeastern corner. And on a desk next to a suit wearing skeleton, we find the facilities terminal. Here we find completely new entries. And the first security installations, they've ordered more turrets. No, I'm not kidding. Get them installed and triple check the IFF. I don't want any more accidents while the boss is on his security binge. He might not like visitors, but I don't want any more dead bodies on my watch. Oh my gosh. Exactly how many visitors to AMS did their security system kill? And how could they have gotten away with it? In the next pneumatic elevator emergencies, something needs to be done. This happens too often. Tried increasing the vacuum pressure, but we crank that too high. Well, it won't be pretty. Maybe this is an HR problem and not a technical one. Wow, Michael is really causing work for everyone here. And it sounds like his home life was a mess. Poor guy. And in the final one, avoid the radiation lab. I don't want any work crews going near the radiation labs on the second floor. None. Let the robots do the cleanup. 
Trust me, you don't want to know why. Well, we know why. Dead, irradiated animal bodies. Lots of specimens lying around. Yeah, robot work. Moving south, we can pass through the big double doors where we find a staircase. Heading upstairs, we can pass through a mezzanine where we find more skeletons. We see this pneumatic tube going even further upstairs. And as we climb the stairs ourselves, we get attacked by turrets and Colonel Gutsies. Well, we got some of them. We'll hide in this room for now. This southern room has another fusion generator where we can get yet another fusion core. Opening a door to the east, we can pass through it. And this brings us to the other side of this large room. Here we can get rid of more robotic security. We can open a door into this eastern room. It appears to be an executive's office. We can loot three robot models on a display cabinet to the east. Interestingly, the picture of a ship is labeled Fancy Framed Lighthouse. Whoops. There appears to be a private bathroom here. Yeah, sure enough. All the amenities for a high-tech executive, including, you guessed it, more cigarettes. The Fallout 76 official strategy guide says there should be a magazine in here, but it was gone when I came to explore it. And next to the sink, we find a skill level two locked floor safe. But let's see if we can open it with the terminal. Heading to the desk, we find a revolver and some ammunition, and we discover that this was the CEO's office. Here we can read CEO Kilson's terminal. Here we find three new entries. In the first, partnership report Robco. Robco continues to be excited about Watoga. We are footing the bulk of the cost, but I'm recommending to the board that we continue to approve expenses no matter how high they get. Having the Robco name attached to us in any way has proved invaluable when dealing with the politicians. We are also seeing the benefits of having a high-profile effort that deflects attention away from our other operations. What other operations? Like blowing up Welch? And the next partnership report, Hornwright. Hornwright Industrial continues to revolutionize its product lines, and we are going to be purchasing their auto miners as fast as they can produce them. I know some members of the board are still upset that our joint effort with Robco did not produce our own version of an automated mining robot, but Hornwright's experience with drilling applications proved to be the key linchpin. They are just cheaper and faster to make than we were ever capable of doing ourselves. Penny Hornwright also has a history with our company, and I want to again emphasize that she did not steal anything during her internship here. On the contrary, all of our license agreements with Hornwright Industrial were signed thanks to her insistence. We are all benefiting from this partnership, so I need everyone to embrace the Hornwright Auto Miner as our solution moving forward. Ha! Huh. No backstabbing? Betrayal? Ulterior motives? Okay. Looks like a genuine partnership. And in the final one, Ultrasight R&D report, energy production from Ultrasight continues to exceed expectations. Depleted Ultrasight disposal continues to be a problem. Contact with non-depleted Ultrasight causes a corrosive reaction that melts both materials. Care has to be taken to contain all depleted Ultrasight material after use to avoid contamination. No explanation on why we failed to detect Ultrasight in mineshaft number nine. All previous measures rule that site a failure. The sudden development of Ultrasight there continues to confound all previous assumptions. The vein in number 9 extending slash bursting into the town of Welch has also had unintended consequences of a more political nature. Our friends in the state capital are asking more questions at a time when we need to focus. Answers on how Ultrasight is created continues to be a top priority if we are ever going to take production to the national level. So that's why they destroyed Welch. They discovered an Ultrasight vein. Hornwright tried to beat them to it, but AMS got there first. And what, did the Ultrasight just suddenly appear in Mineshaft number nine? How did the Ultrasight appear? And how could they justify destroying Welch to get it? Seems like all this CEO was concerned about was the political ramifications, not the destroyed and displaced lives that he caused. We didn't find an option to open the safe, so we can head back to Pickett and then leave the CEO's office to continue exploring this large room. There is a staircase leading up in the middle of the floor, and we can take care of a few more turrets. Moving to the other side, we can take care of a few more. We see the very roof of this building above us. We must be directly beneath the dome we see near the top of the tower from outside. And taking the stairs, we arrive at the top floor. There is a bank of consoles on a platform to the west, the end point of a big nomadic elevator to the east, and a couple of different rooms. 
Heading up to the platform to the west first, we find some scrap, a few blasted out terminals, and one still functioning terminal, the data monitoring terminal, locked with a skill level two lock. After hacking it, we read, attention, code red, delete everything. Warning, file not found. Please contact a system administrator. And in the next one, file not found. And the next one, file not found. They deleted all of their data, but why? So they never had to answer for what they did to Welch? And what caused them to make this decision? Were they under investigation? Was the military on its way? Or was this their last act when the bombs dropped in 2077? We can unlock a safe here, but where is that safe? I looked around a bit and I didn't see it. We'll have to keep our eyes open. Heading to the other side of the console bank, we find an end of dungeon steamer truck. Moving east first, we find an open office, some seating in the middle, and a couple of blasted out workstations. Heading out and moving to the eastern side of this platform, we see a long meeting table, and the skeletons of the AMS executives still sit at this table. Executives in suits, a secretary in a dress taking notes, and even a military officer. A skeleton, presumably the CEO, sits in a cozy chair at the head of the table. In front of him is a suitcase, stacked high with pre-war money, and next to it, three pieces of ultrasight scrap. And of course, every single one of them is smoking cigarettes. It's like an episode of Mad Men. I get the impression that here we see, frozen in time, a transaction between AMS and the US military. AMS had a monopoly on producing ultrasight, and the government was interested in using ultrasight to fuel the war effort. No wonder they destroyed Welch. The stakes were too high. They had to get their hands on this government contract. The Fallout 76 official strategy guide says that there should be a bobblehead on this table, but someone must have snuck in and got it. Behind the CEO, we see a big box safe. Oh, so here's the safe we opened. Inside, we find a random plan, some weapons, chems, and ammunition. Moving to the northern side, we can explore the final room. And this, like the other, is just another open office space with seating and blasted out workstations. But here we find the skeleton of a soldier with an assault rifle and a box of ammunition. Could this be evidence of a sinister military plot? If AMS didn't agree to the government's terms, would they have made them agree by force? Otherwise, why else would this guy be hiding here with a sniper rifle and a box of ammunition? AMS was business savvy, but not savvy enough to understand that you don't do business with the pre-war American government in the Fallout universe. But then again, perhaps they didn't have a choice. And that's it for the AMS corporate headquarters. To leave, we can access the pneumatic tube right next to the CEO. And this leads back down to the AMS lobby. So it was all about Ultrasight. AMS discovered Ultrasight, researched Ultrasight, mined for, refined, and produced Ultrasight. They had a monopoly on Ultrasight and destroyed Welch to get at more Ultrasight. They knew even at that time that vaporizing Ultrasight would produce high levels of radiation that would quickly mutate creatures. Not over the span of 25, 100, or 200 years, but presumably in a matter of days. The government knew that they had Ultrasight, but then the government fell. But does this mean that the remnants of the pre-war government also knew about Ultrasight? In our next video, we'll have to explore the town of Welch to see firsthand the devastation that this thirst for Ultrasight did to the people who lived there. If you don't want to miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have, but you feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.